Welcome to my new series of Japan travel videos. I've been waiting so long to film these for you. We're going to start off with a travel day flying to Japan. I'll show you what it's like arriving at Haneda Airport in Tokyo, picking up your JR pass and pocket Wi Fi, and how it went with Visit Japan Web. And at the end, I've got a preview of what's coming up. This series, we're going to Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka, Kobe, Kinosaki Onsen, and Kyoto. I can't wait to show you. We're starting off at London Heathrow Terminal 5, taking the pods from the car park to the terminal. The pods are driverless electric vehicles that you can take instead of a bus to get to the terminal. I think they're so cute, and they're a lot more fun than a bus. Hello, where do you want to go? You are going to Terminal 5. Is that okay? Please let people off the pod before you get in. Your pod is going to Terminal 5. You're going to Terminal 5. Press start. Press start. We're flying with British Airways direct from Heathrow to Tokyo Haneda. I tend to book whichever airline has the best fares at the time and this time it was BA. Now let's get ready for takeoff. say premium economy is all that luxurious especially for the price it usually is but it was nice to have a bit of extra room especially for such a long flight The flight was supposed to be 13 hours 40 minutes, but it turned out to be just over 13 hours. It's longer than usual because they have to fly under Russia and the Ukraine at the moment. On the way back, we actually flew the other way over Alaska and Greenland, so it was a round the world trip. That way was 14 hours 40 minutes, the longest flight I've ever been on. They just went through with the paper customs forms that we used to fill in on the plane. They said you only need to fill them in if you haven't done Visit Japan Web. So if you have your QR codes, you don't have to do anything. But if you haven't done that, you still need to fill in the paper forms. Here's the menu. They've got a Japanese option for the main course. Uh, tsukune Japanese chicken meatballs with yakiniku sauce. Here's the amenity kit. It's nice that everything's matching. So this matches the menus and the pillow and blankets. This feels really soft actually. And here's the blanket. That also feels really soft. I think it's better than the blanket you get in economy. Here's what you get. It's good to know they've thought about making it sustainable. I think they could have done a bit more though. There still is a bit of plastic in this. You get some socks, an eye mask, a pen, there's a lip balm and a toothbrush and tiny toothpaste. We've got all the drinks. When you order a special meal on a plane, you always get your dinner before everyone else. So I've got mine first. This is a calama calamarata pasta, a pasta dish. I've got winterberry pudding. There's some cheese and crackers. And there's some salad here with 
couscous and a little roll. Phil's gone for the Japanese chicken meatballs. So all the accompaniments are the same, you just get a different main meal. This meal was actually really tasty, especially the cheesy pasta and the winter spice dessert. My meal on the way back was a bit bland. Sometimes when you're vegetarian on a plane, they give you all the fruit and salad. And I do like to be healthy, but it is annoying when everyone else gets cheese and crackers and a proper pudding. Instead of pull down blinds, the windows had a button to press to fade the glass. When it was half faded, it gave it a cool vaporwave color scheme. I find it so hard to sleep on a plane, but I was woken up by my breakfast. I am never a fan of these eggs and omelette style breakfasts. We're landing in about 40 minutes and you can see Mount Fuji out the plane. It's such a clear view, there's no clouds. This was a real treat. I've seen Fuji from the plane before, but it's always been poking through the clouds, so we were really lucky to get such a clear view. Everyone was so excited. Um, people were giving their cameras to the people in the window seats to take pictures for them. After a long flight, this stunning view was a really nice welcome to Japan. I really liked how you could see all the other snowy mountains in the background too. I think that might be the easy peninsula you can see, maybe. There was even a really clear view of Fuji when we were flying near Tokyo and when we landed at the airport. We just arrived at Haneda Airport. We've just been through all the arrivals procedures and now we're free to go. So we did all the Visit Japan web stuff and it all went absolutely fine. When we first arrived, there were loads of staff there with loads of signs saying, Visit Japan web, get out your phone, prepare your QR code. And they had big QR codes on the wall to connect to the Wi-Fi which was a bit slow to connect at the start but we've got printouts so I just kept them so everyone could see them and it was fine. The QR code for immigration, they just scanned that when we showed the passports as normal. That didn't take any extra time. Then we picked up the suitcases and then they had some booths where you scan your passport and the QR code for customs and then we had to go through another sort of ticket gate thing where they took our photo and that's it really easy it was fine some people have been asking about the automatic passport gates because they were worried if you go through the automatic gates you don't get a stamp in your passport for your JR pass but it looked to me like the automatic passport gates were just for Jap Japanese residents so all the tourists were going through the manual gates where there's a person checking your passport and doing the stamp so you don't need to worry about that. So now we've just got a few things to do before we leave the airport. We've got to pick up our pocket Wi-Fi and we've got to pick up our JL passes as well. Here's the JL ABC counter and this is where we're picking up our pocket Wi-Fi. You can usually have them delivered to your hotel but I chose to pick it up at the airport because then we can use it to find the hotel. All the signs at the airport are in English as well as Japanese and it's an international terminal so the staff are used to dealing with non-Japanese speakers. We're just picking up our JR passes at the JR East Travel Service Centre. If you follow signs to the monorail, it's just right next to the monorail ticket gates. There's a bit of a queue here because there's quite a lot of people want to pick up their JR passes at the airport. You can also get your welcome Suka card here. That's the version that's for foreigners. It's only valued for 28 days. There's no deposit and it's not refundable at the end. Suica is a pass for local trains, including the Tokyo Metro. I think it's the easiest way to pay for your trains. You can also get regional train passes at this office. So if you want to do a bit of traveling, but you don't need a JR pass for the whole of Japan, you can buy it here. We've got our JR passes. That bit did take quite a while because there were quite a lot of people there who wanted to pick up their JR passes. And it did say you can only make one seat reservation at the airport, probably because it gets so busy you have to go to a different station if you want to make more than one seat reservation. So from when we landed, it took about 50 minutes to go through all the passport procedures, pick up our bags and do all of that. Then it took about 10 minutes to pick up the pocket Wi-Fi and then about half an hour, 40 minutes to pick up the JR passes. JR passes used to be a folded card. They're now a small cardboard ticket, so you can use them at the automatic ticket gates, which is actually a lot better. 
However, this stressed me out so much throughout the whole trip because it can't be replaced if it gets lost or damaged or even if it gets stolen. So you have to be really careful with it. Finally, we're taking the Tokyo monorail into the city. If you have a JR pass, it's included. It only takes about 15 minutes to Hamamicho station, which is on the JR Yamanote line. Tokyo from there, we change to the Yamanote line to get to our hotel in Shibuya. You can also take the Kaikyu line, which takes you to Shinagawa Station, which is also on the JR Yamanote line. And that one also takes about 15 minutes, but it's not covered by a JR pass or you can take a coach, which might be easier if you have a lot of luggage or if you're traveling as a family. I was excited to go through Takanawa Gateway Station, which is the newest station in Tokyo. It opened in 2020. I find all these sounds on the train so evocative of Japan. Maybe this wasn't the most exciting video, but there's loads coming up. There's new videos every other Thursday, so subscribe if you want to catch them. And here's a quick preview for you. It's Dr. Yellow! Amazing, that's so lucky I didn't think we'd see it. Bye bye Dr. Yellow!